many people ask me what my greatest sporting moment is. And I have to say that it was that exact moment that Cassie's arm was coming out, saw his fingers go, and it was in the final of the World Championships in Maastricht 1981. And it was only coming out, remember, which meant that I wasn't world champion yet and he hadn't submitted yet. And so there was still a little way to go. But it was the absolute expectation of what was about to happen and the certainty that it was going to happen that made this moment so special. And I'd worked so hard in my preparation with thousands of different kinds of jujigatami uh, in practice and in contests because I used to have the bottle to do it in contests. And I was very confident that if I got into the right position at the right time, that I could apply the jujigatami to anyone in the world in any contest. And once I'd caught the beginning, which is the catch, I, I like to call it the catch, then the one thing uh, that I had was the thing that I was going for, which was the harm. Um, and of course, one thing led to another. And no matter what direction that I had to change uh, to go to, in the end, it would be successful and that I could make it work. And I remember in this final, I actually had two bites at the cherry and I nearly caught him applying it from underneath after he'd taken me backwards after a failed Tayatoshi attempt. Uh, remember, I'd thrown him a few months earlier with Tayatoshi in the final of the uh, US Open tournament. So I thought I'd have another go at that. And uh, when I did it, I did it the first time and then I did it a second time. He took me backwards and I landed on my back. Uh, but I'd been practicing this particular variation of a spinning juji off my back. And so I spun underneath him uh, with the arm. It, it traps the arm at the same time. And I practiced it many times uh, in practice. And, and I'd done it in contests as well, but not in the final of the World Championships, of course. And of course, the angle of the video that they took of me doing it at the time, nobody caught it from different directions, unfortunately. So it doesn't really show how full on I was with the arm. It was completely out straight. And I honestly thought this was it because I was really, um, really going on the arm. And incredibly, he managed to resist and um, Mate was called. And uh, when we stood up, of course, he was rubbing his right arm and it was almost there. It was so close, so close. And him and I both knew it. And I remember thinking, this is where I can catch him. I can catch him down on the ground here. And it was a little later in the contest that I changed from my right-handed techniques, which is Uchimata, because I opened up the whole thing with an Uchimata. And then uh, it was Tayatoshi. I thought, well, I'm not going to catch him with that. So I changed it to the left-handed uh, drop Sinagi. And although it didn't score on him, it brought me up behind him and gave me his back. And so many of my Jujigatami starts have been from my opponent's either failed attacks, I enforce a, a failed attack, or by my transition into the Jujigatami from my own attacks, either from uh, Sienagi or from a Tayatoshi or from um, a Tomonagi as well. But the key to all of the attacks uh, in Newaza, any kind of Newaza transition, is the fluidity of movement into the start, and in my case here, the Jujigatami, and securing the main thing, which of course was the arm. Now, without it, of course, you can't arm lock. You can't strangle without the neck. You can't arm lock without securing the arm. And thousands upon thousands of Uchikomi and Randori repetitions had prepped me for this one moment. And I was on his back like 
a leech and my leg and my arm went in together for the catch because um, they both work together, of course, with it. It's not just the arm. You need the leg in as well to lock you into the body. And sometimes, of course, when you start the movement, you have to go with the flow of the movement. And that's exactly what I did. Casse, of course, he wasn't going to give up the world title easy. And I remember he rolled one way, then he rolled the other way. And uh, then he did a full forward roll with me landing into the Jujikatami position at his side. Uh, and not one time did I release the pressure on his arm. I had the arm all the time and I had his body under control. And when, he, uh, when we came to the side position, I needed to secure his head uh, before he kind of sat up or rolled backwards. And, of course, I needed to secure his head, to apply pressure to his head, to take the arm out. One wrong turn, and for sure, he would have got out. Now, to release the pressure, he bridged. And I think he was hoping to backflip onto his knees and then stand up. And I remember thinking, change your balance, don't panic. Uh, so I put pressure... Uh, on and then more pressure on his arm and then pressure on his head and then I changed the angle of the pressure on the arm to release his grip but without going too far up towards his head and I even gripped my own jacket to get more leverage. His fingers, I remember, I was looking at them, started to slip and I remember thinking this is coming out. It's, it, this is on the way. And uh, the hand uh, came free. And I made a couple of readjustments with my body and my hips and then started to straighten his arm. And without panicking, because that's the main thing, isn't it? Is that is the, you can panic and they can pull the arm in and then it's gone. You've lost it forever and you've got to start all over again. But I made sure that his thumb was pointed upwards and his hand uh, came up, I remember, ready to tap my leg. It was the anticipation. I knew that I'd done it. I knew that he was going to submit. And uh, I thought, I've done it. I'm world champion. And um, when he tapped, of course, um, I can't tell you uh, the feeling that I had inside. Without a doubt, it was my greatest sporting moment ever.